Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination, providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts which they earn by watching. We continue where we left off in the previous video where I was trying to get our assets around Mars together. We first saw a derelict bunch of tanks which I just renamed. This supply vessel has some food and oxygen on it so we would like to deal with it and bring it in. Uh, this is the leftover portions of Mars Station 2, no longer with the crew, so that's not urgent, but I saw it had some Delta V on it, so I wanted to check whether we could get it to Phobos with the Delta V that it has, and it looked a little bit tight. You can see the burn to get into Phobos orbit takes about 800 meters per second, and that's all we've got, and then we have to do a correction before that, so it did not have enough Delta V. But I decided that maybe it'd have a chance if we correct some inclination first and get the periapsis to a better location on Phobos's orbit. So we do the correction with the bridge stages that we have there, uh, combined bridge stages. And then I check out how much more it'll take, but it does seem like it's got to take more than we've got. So I decided to abandon that particular situation. It's not a very useful, it does have some food, water and oxygen though, but overall not that much. So we'll let it be for now, and I turn to this leftover supply section, and we don't have any supplies left in it, so that's there. Like, I'm not getting rid of anything from the tracking station if it's in orbit around another planet. For now, we're just going to leave them be and try and deorbit them later, actually try and deorbit them. Anyway, so that was all the other stuff that we had to take care of, but we also have to bring this mission in to Phobos Station. We got into the Phobos orbit here, but it's very cumbersome. It's huge, more than 200 tons. And so it's a little bit difficult to maneuver it. And we have to do RCS burns. I don't want to light that special engine we've got there. Here we are approaching Phobos Station, which is about equal in mass to this, maybe a little bit more. But it's physically a bit larger and more cumbersome because it's a collection of different elements, a larger collection of different elements, and it's got RCS thrusters all over the place. But I decided to have it turn to help us out here. Uh, makes sense. And so they'll be equal partners in the docking, if you will. Uh, this approaches. It's a pretty massive undertaking, and we need to be careful with this. Thanks to this docking, this station will be about as heavy as the International Space Station, so no small thing that we've got in Phobos orbit. Uh, it looks like, though, Really, if we tried this in Principia, it wouldn't work out. Stuff doesn't like to stay in Phobos orbit in Principia, so... Uh, in real life, you wouldn't want to have a Phobos station, necessarily. Uh, you'd probably just want a Phobos base, just stick it on the ground and anchor it. Otherwise, it'll probably get flung out by various gravitational forces. Anyway, but we've got it here and we've got it together, so... That is quite a conglomeration, isn't it? And we're still bringing some more stuff to it. Speaking of which, we've got this truncated nuclear thermal propulsion section, just the HAB and the drive section that we left behind the tanks in high orbit. And this is getting itself into orbit around Phobos and making sure that we are in a good situation to dock. We let go of the tug stage, and that's the silver one that you see on the left. And this now has to dock to the station, adding even more mass to the whole thing. So yes. Uh, I decided to move off the special stage with the fuel that was here just to bring a whole lot of fuel to the station. But we want that docking port for the habitat so that there's sort of a continuous habitat area. Basically everything on that hub is currently habitable, so that's good. And we'll just relocate that uh, huge fuel stage, fuel transfer stage, somewhere else. It looks like to one of the docking ports on one of the HABs. And try to orient it nicely, you know. And there we are docking. Yeah, it's sort of like a mirror sort of thing as far as it being looking like a conglomeration of stuff. But anyway. Here we are with your pops and Madden Kerman. We are not going to dock this to the station though. They did get into Phobos orbit. But the station is very pretty big. We don't really need these modules. They don't have a whole lot of food, water, and oxygen. So I just EVA your pops and Madden over to the station. 
at fair distance too. It was pretty laggy as well. The station now being so big creates a lot of lag. So anyway, your pops gets on board. And then Madden Kerman also has to transfer over. No problems though. It's a nice little jaunt for these two. Now we've got all these Kerbals on the same station. We have to check on those supplies. It looks like the Phobos station has enough for now. But you can see 10 crew, that's a lot to have in orbit around Mars. And it's actually not all the Kerbals that we have around Mars right now. We've got a few spares. But you can see the full listing of the life support situation. We've got a lot to deal with. Lots of logistics. And especially the MV Silence Venus mission which just has MV Silence on. And of course our Lunar Gateway we need to deal with. This uh, portion that I decide not to dock to the Phobos station, I just have exit Phobos orbit and it'll be a derelict in Mars orbit as well. I thought about crashing it, I think, but it's pretty big. So here we had my lab and my lab's center mass is not quite through the docking port, which is going to pose some problems, but this is Bill in orbit around Mars. We want Bill to get to the Phobos station, but currently my lab doesn't have enough Delta V. It is carrying quite a lot of supplies, so Bill's all right. We would like the supplies over, but we'll need a pretty big tug to get it over there. Now I checked on the MV Silence Venus mission, wanted to see what kind of docking port it had, and then I brought out this Gaganyan spacecraft on top of this uh, collaboration SpaceX Indian rocket. It's got the cryogenic stage from the GSLV Mark III. It's got the Raptor 9 rocket, which is an upper stage with a single Raptor vacuum engine, and then a lower stage with nine Raptor sea level engines, and then four of the boosters from the GSLV Mark III rocket. So, yeah, it's quite a formidable looking thing. Uh, I, I wonder, you know, you never know. I should probably test what its payload capacity is. Not that anybody is ever going to make such a thing in real life or anything, but uh, it's, it's an interesting thing. So there go the boosters. And we've got the fins on. I didn't add grid fins though. The fins are actually the landing legs. It actually lands on those. They've got little flaps that help with the landing and also with slowing down, adding drag. But yeah, I did reserve some fuel in there for a potential landing. Probably it would have to be on a drone ship or something. Off goes the escape system. And we make orbit on the Raptor vacuum upper stage. A little bit lopsided there. And there we release the cryogenic stage. The Raptor vacuum stage is going to deorbit itself. And again, this is all to get to MV Silence's Venus mission, bring MV Silence down. We don't want to resupply MV Silence up there. So we need some. Do Ooh, that's getting a little bit close. <laughs> uh, a little bit of an inadvisable turn there from that stage. I guess it wasn't that bad. Anyway, maybe it's just the camera angle. So we have to get to a high orbit to where MV Silence is. MV Silence just barely captured into Earth orbit. And so that is what this stage is now doing to boost up to him. And this is part of the meetup procedure. And there you can see our relative orbits there. Still a big correction to do, but since we're high up, the Delta V isn't too bad because we're both going very slowly. So we finish up with the cryogenic stage here with the CE-20 engine. And then after it's all done, we release it. We've got plenty in the service module. This isn't a typical service module for the Gaganyan spacecraft. It looks the same, but I think the amount of fuel that they're actually going to put in there doesn't take up much of the volume. Uh, whereas what I've done is basically fill up the volume to about 86% utilization. So, yeah, it's a much heavier service module that I've got on here. You can see the full spacecraft mass there and the uh, substantial Delta V we have. This is much more useful like this, but I don't think it's what they are planning on, even though they physically have the volume for this kind of uh, propellant mass. So, we dock, we transfer MB Silence over, and I deorbit this. So here we are coming back down, and at 
lower altitude, I do another retro burn in order to slow us down uh, because we have the fuel and we might as well. I think I've configured the Gagnon spacecraft to come back from the moon potentially, though uh, I don't think it's going to have that capability. Of course, they could always slap a better heat shield on it. Aspect ratio wise, it seems to be okay. But, uh, and it's a fairly light capsule overall. But yeah, I decided to just make sure that we do it semi, a little bit more legitimately. So we slow down a bit. And as it turns out, we're uh, coming down potentially in India. You can see the Himalayas there. Uh, maybe in Burma or Myanmar, but uh, yeah, probably in India there, given our trajectory. I'd have to check the coordinates that we have down there. Uh, we were controlling from the docking port, so it followed the aero cap instead of the capsule. We switched back, and MV Silence is finally coming back down after a uh, trip to Venus, into Venus orbit, but obviously not landing on Venus. That would be that would be dangerous. So the parachutes were apparently a little bit lopsided, but or maybe we had descent mode. I don't know. But recovering vessel, and there we have that situation covered. So we no longer have the little pop-up reminding us that MV Science is running out of food, water, and oxygen, but we still have that pop-up for the Lunar Gateway. I decided to take my candle resupply vessel that I made, which is very expensive because it's got nine RTGs that are we're sending propellant through in order to provide thrust. They provide four kilonewtons apiece, apparently, and bring it back over to Earth instead of having it out here. So we are actually going to try and reuse something for once. <laughs> so it's coming back and there's plenty of propellant uh, now that it's out of food, water, and oxygen uh, to recapture into low Earth orbit manually. And so that's what I do. It takes a couple of burns. And I wanted to bring some people back from Lunar Gateway so we didn't have to resupply so many people up there. And so I took a supply vessel. I tried to configure it sort of like this with uh, BE-7 engines. Those are hydrogen and oxygen, but I went with a bigger set of engines from the Shearstrad engine pack, about 270 kilonewton hydrogen oxygen engines, and a bunch of food, water, and oxygen to resupply the candle supply vessel. And we are launching on an Energia rocket with the payload on top from Cape Canaveral for some reason. I guess it's probably safer that way. Now this is sort of a complicated situation the way I've set up this mission because the stage that we have there with the two Hydrolox shear start engines, well it's going to boost us to the moon and help with capture, but then we have to separate it off, which means that on the Lynx capsule that we have there that's supposed to bring people back, it's just going to be a capsule heat shield and it's got a docking port at the top and it's got a docking port at the bottom. So those two docking ports because one port will be occupied by the candle tug and the other port will be docking to the station. And the candle tug is going to have to finish orbit around the moon, get to Lunar Gateway, and then boost the capsule back to Earth. And then the candle tug will separate off from the Lynx capsule close to when the capsule is getting into the atmosphere, but the candle tug will save itself from hitting the atmosphere. So it's complicated. So there we are rendezvousing with the candle tug, uh, which is just supposed to bring supplies, but now is also going to be carrying the Lynx capsule for a while. And there we are docked, the salute panels for some reason, and we are using those two engines to boost ourselves over to the moon. This takes some time. Nice sort of look to it though. Those panels sure are huge compared to this though. It's not a small thing. And here we are capturing around the moon, and that stage is done. So we let go of it, and now the candle stage and the capsule, and that one docking port at the bottom, which we will let go later on. Okay, so the candle stage is finishing our rendezvous. And here we approach the station. It's awkward. NASA would not like the whole exposed heat shield thing. Um... I'm not too sure what the risks are as far as going to the moon. Hang out in low Earth orbit maybe would be a bit of a problem because there's a lot more junk in low Earth orbit and micrometeorites and stuff like that. Around the moon, I'm not sure how bad it would be. Obviously, they are planning to send starships over to the moon and come back. So 
that would potentially hurt the very exposed underside heat shield of Starship if there was a problem there. But anyway, we brought our crew onto the Lynx. We transferred the supplies over. We don't want to carry the supplies in the candle stage anymore. So the food, water, and oxygen, you see, we only kept enough for the transfer back. And we've got Woozy Boozy and two of the generic Kerbals. Woozy Boozy was a tourist. Theobert and Rombles were automatically generated Kerbals. Anyway, we let go of the links pretty high up, but we've got a good periapsis for return. We let go of the docking port so that it would also be deorbiting. It'll be on the same trajectory and hit the atmosphere and burn up. And then the candle stage uh, burns to save itself from hitting the atmosphere, as you can see. So it could be used again. Unfortunately, I think what happened was because its apoapsis is still pretty high, it got flung out by the moon. And so it ended up in solar orbit. And unfortunately, we did not get to reuse it again. It seemed like a pretty good idea, actually. Very helpful and all. It's not as efficient as a nuclear stage, but those tend to be on the heavier side and we only wanted a little bit of thrust, so... I don't know if we can make a little... Uh, 4 kilonewton nuclear engines? I'm not too sure that's the best idea. Full reactors just to get 4 kilonewtons out of it. But anyway, here the links is splashing down and with this I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.